Yeah. You want to introduce yourself quick? To uh, the... Sure. So my name is Andrea and I'm in the Elixir core team. Nice. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And where are you here from? Uh, I, I am from Italy and I work in Sweden. Uh, in Gothenburg though, not nice. stuck yeah. I think definitely one of the uh, more frequent presenters in the community. So it's great. Uh, great to uh, see you in your language. Tech is a compliment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hope so, yeah. Presentation, so. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. yeah. So, um, so you've been presenting, I think you did a tutorial here, right? Sort of an introduction to Elixir. And, uh, uh, yeah, I helped another member of the core team, James, uh, to do a tutorial, free tutorial for like intro to Elixir yeah. uh, yesterday. Uh, so like half day tutorial. Yeah. And then yeah. it's interesting, we're seeing a lot of momentum around sort of the Beam ecosystem in general. Yeah. I think the different communities coming together. Um, are you guys seeing many people from the Erlang community coming to Elixir events? The same way we're seeing um, Elixir members at the some of the Erlang events? I would say that uh, so the the most I would say that we don't get a lot of Erlang users uh, that want to try out Elixir. Not a, at least not as much uh, as we get users that just want to try out Elixir in general. Yeah. Uh, but we get we do get some Erlang users that want to try out Elixir and we generally I think we're seeing a, a growth in uh, like collaboration between the community so we get uh, we get to help Erlang a bit more Josiah is doing a lot of work Josiah is the creator of Elixir yeah. so he's doing a lot of work um, with Erlang and he's contributing a lot to Erlang uh, and I think uh, the whole community is starting to like we're starting to report bugs to Erlang more often try to yeah. focus on or trying to um, when we get a bug report, try to see if we can improve it in Erlang first. Uh, the thing that we get, or just just feature requests, try to do try to see if it, if it's good to like move them to Erlang uh, so that we can help everybody that relies on the beam basically. Um, but it, yeah, in general, I see. I, I think it's there's a lot of collaboration going on in the the whole beam community. I hope. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think for for people that aren't necessarily aware of it, essentially everything that any you know, library or functionality using in uh, the Elixir ecosystem can also leverage everything that's available in the Erlang ecosystem. Yes, well. yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Elixir is built just on top of Erlang. It's just a layer on top of Erlang. So everything that Erlang can do, Elixir can do like, basically uh, the same. Um, and it's kind of true the other way around as well. So if you, if you write Erlang uh, Elixir code, you can use it from Erlang. Uh, provided you don't use a bunch of features that are Elixir particular, uh, like macros, for example. Yeah. Um, but everything else, if you write a library in Elixir, uh, it will work from Erlang as well. Provided you have the Elixir ecosystem. So I don't, I don't think we see that often because you need the whole Elixir yeah. standard library and everything uh, to to use it from Erlang. But everything compiles down to Beam files, so everything must be like must talk to each yeah. other. At the end of the day, yeah. Yeah, and we, we spoke with Kenneth earlier this morning, and he yeah. talked about uh, some of his excitement around um, you know that the things flowing in that direction as well, right? So people in the Erlang ecosystem being able to leverage um, what you're able to do to do in Elixir. Um, yes. And, you know, yeah. Maybe that. Yeah. Yeah. I think the. I think I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think a success story would be uh, RabbitMQ. You can now write plugins with Elixir. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, and RabbitMQ is written in Erlang, yeah. but I mean the integration I, I suppose was quite, quite quite easy because you just need to like write you can write basically RabbitMQ plugins in Elixir and it, I mean RabbitMQ doesn't care if it's Elixir or, or Erlang because it's gonna be the same at the end of the day right? it's gonna come down to the same the same thing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe just to wrap up, is there anything exciting that you see um, sort of coming down the pipeline the next couple of months or the next year? Anything exciting you're working uh, on? Or? For Elixir, there's a lot of exciting stuff because we're focusing a lot on research. So this, mm -hmm. the release that we, I'm going to talk this, uh, about this in the, my talk tomorrow. But yeah. the um, stuff that we're focusing the most now, so this release has been mostly just improvements, like mm -hmm. general improvements, no earth shattering uh, things. But we're doing a lot of research uh, right now, so we're. Um, we have Google Summer of Code going on, so we have two projects in Google Summer of Code uh, going on now. So there's there's research around that. Jose is doing research on some stuff. I'm doing research on some other stuff like properties testing, um, a la Haskell's Big Check. Uh, so I think I think it's a exciting time to yeah. we're focusing a lot of like on improvements to the language. Not, yeah, yeah. And I think we're, we're seeing that across the language too. I think in the Phoenix ecosystem as well. You know, with some of what Chris is doing again, it's you know, some stabilization around the current releases and then focus on really doing yeah, some yeah, cutting edge Yeah, yeah, we're really seeing, I think, the community mature 
like I grow and grow like as in uh, as in mature like yeah. get more mature uh, and like I would say uh, I don't know we're 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 realizing a lot of stuff I would say I, yeah I will it boils down to that I think we're realizing realizing a lot of stuff and realizing how to probably do a lot of stuff in Phoenix is the same thing like we're we're getting very familiar with the ecosystem with the, like functional stuff yeah. and we're plugging research into that like existing research into that and I think we're we're finding a lot of good ways to do things I would think like, like when Chris Chris built out uh, Chris McCord the creator of Phoenix built out um, some of the functionality that should be used for presence yeah. in addition to channels. Yeah. The byproduct of that was uh, the ability to do service discovery about it, the potential to do service discovery using some of that. Yes, so yes, exactly. I think there's some of that research and innovation. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exciting exactly. to see. Yeah, 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 yeah so that's hopefully yeah. some of that's on deck this year. Yeah. This is probably the closest we've had to a full. Presentation where you haven't had a joke yet. So yes, yes, I didn't. Have a joke. <laughs> we'll, we'll I didn't prepare jokes, tomorrow. So yeah, yeah. So and tomorrow I can do any jokes because yeah. best comedian in the elixir community. Yes. So. Okay, we'll wrap right there. Thanks a lot for chatting. No worries.